Guess who developed the protocol for those fake demos? And did those fake demos hide errors? Guess who was involved in the pharmaceutical deals and guess who wasn't? So I'm going to give you the highlights of today's testimony in day 13 of the Sunny Balwani trial. Hi there, I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and a former prosecutor. You may recognize me because I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case, who is the co-defendant and the alleged co-conspirator of Sonny Balwani. So this video is for education and informational purposes. This is simply my opinion. So please do leave your opinion. What's your analysis of all this testimony? Leave a comment, hit, this, hit the like button, bell notification. Please do support my work by subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the highlights of today's testimony and also give you some scheduling updates for next week. All right, so Dan Edlin, and in case you popped on this channel, Dan Edlin was the senior product manager of Theranos, and he's currently under cross-examination. They completed cross with him today, so he's off the witness stand as of today. And the court was only in session half day today. So what did Edlin testify to and did he help out the defense? And I think he did. You know, keep in mind the defense's goal here on cross-examination is to do what? Is to show where Balwani was not involved. To point the finger at Elizabeth Holmes. To say Elizabeth Holmes was responsible, responsible for this. Balwani wasn't involved. All right, so let's see what happened. So Edlin did testify. Let me get my notes here. It's Friday. <laughs> All right, so they asked on cross-examination whether Edlin prepared, whether he was involved in preparing Elizabeth Holmes for that interview that she gave to Roger Parloff for the Fortune magazine article. And why is that important? Because Edlin said he helped prepare her. Did Balwani, was Balwani involved? And Edlin was asked whether Balwani was at the interview with Parloff. And he says he didn't know. But he did say that he helped Holmes prepare for the interview. And if you go back and you look at the video I did last Wednesday, the Darn Logos video, and remember how I went through those emails and I showed you that list of action items and I pointed out to you, I didn't see Balwani mentioned in those or assigned any of those action items. Well, that's what they did on cross today. All right. So I don't know. Are they looking at my videos? <laughs> Who knows? All right. So Balwani's counsel, so the defense counsel showed Ed, Ed, Edlin, a list of action items to prepare Holmes for the interview with Roger Parloff. Daniel Young was responsible for giving her some data, but it was Holmes who was responsible for the proficiency testing data, for the pharmaceutical reports, and for the validation reports. And Edlin agreed that Balwani didn't give her any of the data. Balwani didn't give her any of the data that she relied upon to do that interview. So again, it's showing Balwani wasn't involved, right? That's what they, they want to point their finger at Holmes. And why is that important regarding the Roger Parloff article in Fortune magazine? Why is that important? Well, because in the Holmes case, a couple of the investors, Lisa Peterson, I think Brian Grossman, and I think uh, Dan Mosley, all testified, I think, I know Lisa Peterson and Mosley did testify, I think Grossman did too, that they did read Roger Parloff's article, right? They read it. That was part of the materials that was provided by, in that binder, that was provided by Holmes, right? It was Holmes's interview with Roger Parloff. So if the defense can show that Balwani was involved, was not involved in any of that interview prep, then maybe they're going to argue Then he can't be responsible for what she said in that Parloff article. And if that article in the Fortune magazine was all that information, those statements were relied upon by the investors, maybe they could argue, well, Balwani didn't make any of those representations. 
he wasn't involved. He wasn't at the interview. According to Edlin, they they asked Edlin, the defense asked Edlin on cross, was Balwani present during the interview that Elizabeth Holmes gave to Roger Parloff? He said, Edlin said he didn't know. Then, so that could be good for the defense. Then the defense got into the relationship with the military, right? Because one of the allegations by the prosecution is that Balwani and Holmes misrepresented the relationship with the military, whether or not their equipment was being deployed in the field, etc. Well, Edlin testified that the Army's burn study was a success. The burn study was a success. And he also said that they did complete that study, but that they did need more participants. So again, they maybe the defense could argue, well, that's not misrepresenting because they did have a successful burn study. I don't know. Maybe that's what the defense is doing with this. Okay, so let's look at what else did Edlin say? So the, def the defense asked Edlin about the AFCON deal. And if you look at the prior video I did, all the the military, uh, the emails that Edlin had with the military, because he was the one who was responsible for overseeing the projects with the military. So the defense got Edlin to acknowledge that the military did in fact use, they did use the Theranos devices in Africa to test if they could handle the extreme conditions. So again, maybe that shows that they didn't misrepresent anything because the military did use the Theranos devices. But Edlin did say that the devices weren't used on patients in the field. So maybe that gets to the representation. Maybe they could, the prosecution could argue, you know, Balwani and Holmes represented that it was being deployed in the battlefield. Well, if you're not using it on the patients, maybe that was a misrepresentation. I don't know. So we'll have to see, you know, again, the jury makes the call on this. Okay, so then the defense got into emails where Edlin asked Balwani, remember in the, if you look at the prior video I did, I showed you the whole email trail between Edlin, Balwani, I mean, between Edlin, the military, Elizabeth Holmes. And I know, and I pointed out that Balwani wasn't mentioned in those emails. But what they pointed out here in Cross is that Edlin asked Balwani to review his response to the military about complying with the military's IT requirements in Afghanistan. Edlin said that Balwani was in charge of the team that was working on Theranos IT and networking capabilities. So maybe that's showing that, okay, yeah, Balwani was responsible for the IT requirements, but he had nothing to do with how these devices worked, right? So again, they're pointing the finger at somebody else. So then they also got into, the defense asked Edlin whether um, Balwani was involved in the pharmaceutical deals. And he testified that as far as he knows, that as far as he knows, Balwani was not, not involved in the pharmaceutical deals and that Elizabeth Holmes supervised him and was the point person. Holmes was the point person on interactions with pharmaceutical companies. Why is that important? Remember this whole fight over defense wanted to keep out the logos? Remember the logos, the three logos that Elizabeth Holmes admitted that she misappropriated? She took the logos, put it on the, uh, the reports that were provided in those binders to the investors. And the defense has tried several times to keep out those logos. Well, if the defense could now argue based on what Edlin just testified to, that Balwani had nothing to do with the pharmaceutical companies, then maybe they can argue, you know what? Let's keep out those pharmaceutical, those reports, because Edlin said that Balwani had nothing to do. So how would he know? How would he know that those logos were misappropriated? Interesting. We'll have to see how that works out. But that's good for the defense. They're distancing him, right? They're showing that Bowani had nothing to do with pharmaceutical. It was all about Elizabeth. She's the one that handled it. Therefore, you can't hold Bowani responsible for any information regarding pharmaceutical companies or those logos. So we'll see. And by the way, on next Tuesday, 
the defense has yet another motion for miscellaneous relief. So maybe it relates to asking the judge to keep out those logos again. Maybe they're going to try that again, or maybe it has something to do with the pharmaceutical company testimony or other witnesses from pharmaceutical companies. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I don't know what it's about yet, what Tuesday's motion is, and that's before the jury comes back, uh, starts, I think, 9 o'clock on Tuesday. And next week, here's the scheduling update. So next week, they're going to be in trial Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. And by the way, uh, the case is, the trial is scheduled out to, let me look at my notes real quick here. Um, I looked at the judge's calendar. It's scheduled out till May 20th, okay? But what's interesting is I notice is that it's double set for trials starting May 10th. So that indicates to me that maybe they might be done before May 20th because if you have two uh, cases scheduled for trial on the same day, that might indicate that uh, maybe they think the case is going to wrap up before May 10th. But if it doesn't, it's scheduled out to May 20th. So we'll see. All right. So getting back to what else did Edlin testify to? He also testified that he talked about Elizabeth Holmes, right? And on cross-examination, cross Edlin acknowledged that Elizabeth Holmes, quote, could really hold a room, was an engaging speaker, was a, with a commanding voice, and she understood the assays, how the Theranos devices worked, and was listed as the inventor on the patents. So why is that good? Well, Balwani's not the inventor on the patents, right? So it goes to the defense's theory. It's Elizabeth's company. It's Elizabeth's technology. Her name's on the patent. It's Elizabeth who was out there as a spokesperson. It was Elizabeth who was making the representations. Balwani was just behind the scenes here taking care of the IT. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're arguing. We'll see. All right. And then on redirect by the government, they got Edlin to concede that it was Balwani's team. This is going to hurt. That it was Balwani's team who created the demo protocol for the VIPs, which ran the null protocol that hid the errors. So Edlin told the jury that it was Balwani's team that put together the protocol for the, basically those fake demos for the VIPs. And for a couple of these investor witnesses in the Holmes case, right? I think it was um, Brian Grossman. I think he got his, his blood tested by the device. Uh, yeah, he went to the lab and so did um, members of the DeVos family. I don't remember if Dan Mosley did also check out the technology, but that implicates and incriminates Balwani. If he's the one who developed protocol to hide the errors on these demo tests, that's not good. <laughs> not good for the defense. So the um, also on redirect, Dan Edlin said he was asked if he believes the goal, the goal of showing VIPs, how well the Theranos technology worked, was served by using software that hid the errors from them. Edlin responded, I don't know. So, do they think, was it, I mean, basically, these fake demos, was that actually showing the truth of this technology? And, and who set up, according to Edlin, who set up the software? Balwani. So, that ties Balwani to these fake demos, which... Prosecution, I'm certain, I'm sure it's going to be arguing. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm sure they're going to be arguing that's evidence of fraud, right? Setting up demos that hide errors. All right. So Edlin also said that uh, Balwani was in charge of Theranos software. He was in charge of the clinical lab. He was in charge of the financial documents. And he was in charge with the Walgreens deals. When, um, when he was asked to compile uh, some of the investor binders, Edlin testified 
that Elizabeth Holmes told him to contact Balwani to talk to Balwani regarding getting the information for the financial sections of the binders. In other words, get the financial information from Balwani to put in those binders. So that puts Balwani on the hook for the financials, right? Did they represent true and accurate financials to the investors? Or were they fraudulent? Were they misrepresentations? So it's putting Balwani on the hook for the fake demos, for the deal with Walgreens, for the financials, and for the software, the IT, setting up the protocol for those fake demos. All right, so they finished up with Edlin's um, testimony today, and the trial comes back on Tuesday. So we'll see what happens, who's coming up for the next witness. I think it might be somebody from the pharmaceutical companies. And if so, I'm sure the defense is going to continue to try to distance Balwani, you know, was he at any of the meetings? Did you have any agreements with him? Did you ever talk to him? That kind of stuff. All those questions about he wasn't there. He wasn't there. He wasn't there. All right. So we'll see what happens. Um, let me see what else. Yeah. So first thing on Tuesday is the motion for miscellaneous relief. I'm sure it has something to do with keeping some evidence out. The defense wants to keep some evidence out, but I think the defense made some good points regarding the pharmaceutical deals, which maybe might help them keep out those logos and all those reports, possibly the proficiency testing results, possibly the validation reports, right? Because Edlin pinned that all on Holmes, not on Balwani. So we'll see. You tell me what you think. What's your analysis? So please do leave your analysis and make a comment. Leave a comment, leave a question. Um, and please do support my work by subscribing and thank you very much for watching and do subscribe.